At bottom girls, you make the rockin' world go round. Hello everyone and welcome to another episode of Zareth Prevails. We're doing the five tunes you're modding poorly series. I've changed it due to popular demand to not away from you mod, tunes you may be modding poorly. We'll see. Maybe we'll get more clicks, but that's not really the reason people were wanting that. And I, I thought it was a sensible thing because then I have less words on the thumbnail. Plus, I like to be abrasive. So, <laughs> I don't actually like to. I just manage it somehow. We're going to talk about five of them. And uh, so, keep in mind, folks, th these, are, these are characters that a lot of people have been asking me recently about. I write them down. You know, that's what, one of the reasons... Uh, I have Patreon, people ask me questions, and so, uh, you know, I write them down, and they're characters that I've covered in the past, some of them, some of them are going to be new, and they're just characters that I want you guys to know, this is how I'm modding, they're, they're also characters, I, I do my research, but they're also characters that, um, I, I don't know, like, I don't, I won't claim to have to be the sole arbiter of truth in this, like, I, I think I have a pretty good grasp on what you want for these characters, but... At the same time, your mileage may vary, and your situation may vary. So, with that being said, I think I think we should jump into it, shall we, folks? Let's let's do it, and let's do it without any transition. Let's just go to the game. Whoa, we were in the game. Madness! You didn't even transition. That was crazy. All right, guys. So here's the characters that we talked about last time. This time, let's talk about Grievous. We've talked about him a few times, but gosh, he's still he's one of the most tricky characters to mod for. Here's the thing, guys. The one the characters he is good at fighting, and you typically want him on offense, in my opinion. You guys can go see the video that I made on Grievous's bad on defense, and he's not like terrible on defense. People took take so much offense on those videos because I, I state things maybe a, a little too harshly, but. Uh, he, he's so good on offense, so versatile on offense, that it's very difficult for me to want to take him, uh, put him on defense, and just let him get beat by, like, Bad Batch for max banners. Instead, I love using Grievous to kill, like, General, or, sorry, Commander Luke teams, and Starkiller teams, you know, he, he would kill Night Sisters teams if you if he found them. He, he takes out Admiral Radis teams. There are a lot of, like, he's, he's remaining very consistent. And he also takes out a few different Galactic Legends, or at least does well against them, like against Lord Vader. For instance, he'll kill most of a Lord Vader team if he needs to, uh, you know, depending on the circumstance. But, like... He's, he also takes out Jedi Master Luke from start to finish, certain builds, so, so the Eternal Emperor from start to finish on certain builds, and then he fails remarkably poorly, or remarkably spectacularly, lots of Lees here, on against Supreme Leader Kylo. But the whole thing I am trying to tell you, and it's not working that well, he operates on turn meter gain. That's that's his whole thing. He wants his whole team to work on turn meter gain. And so uh, depending on which comp you're facing, like against Commander Luke, you want Newt there so that he gains that bonus turn immediately. Oh, it's not his leadership. I think it's this one. So whenever a Separatist ally or a droid is defeated, then Grievous dispels all debuffs on himself, resets all ability cooldowns, and gains one bonus turn. So uh, you want you want Newt on that team. However, uh, you know sometimes you want BB-8 on the team instead, like against Starkiller, uh, because people put take a really really fast Mara Jade, and the thing that's nice about them put it, taking a really strong, a really fast Mara Jade is you can still outspeed them if you have BB-8 giving you 40% turn meter then you can still outspeed them, but only if your Grievous is pretty quick. And that's the thing, guys. They're, all of his damage is based off of his health. He doesn't do anything. Like, his offense numbers, his damage, doesn't do anything. Like, the, this offense, yes, I have a little bit of bonus here, but that's mostly just because I have a square mod 
that, that gives me straight offense anyways. His whole th offense is predicated on health. That That is all it is. And so if you have a health modded Grievous, you want him, I mean, minus Relic 8, you want him somewhere in the 140 range, however. Uh, you can do crit damage if you want. I've chosen to go get, like against that route or whatever. Like Some people use crit damage, that's fine. The thing is, uh, yes, you'll do a little more damage. You just have less health to mess around with to keep you alive longer as well against most builds, so that's handy. Uh, so he wants health, because that's his offense. It's also him keeping alive. You also want speed, plus 149 speed. May not seem like a lot, but this is all. these are all health sets. You want health on all of them, and, uh, you know, health primary as well. And then, in addition, uh, if, you, if you want to find, I mean, this is an okay mod. If I wanted to, if I could, I would slice this health mod a little bit more, get a little bit more health on it, you know, get a good secondary, at least for health, but you want speed on him is, is the really big thing. And then the other really important aspect to this, and this is why this, this mod is so cool, potency is the other thing. You want to be able to apply potency. Now, it's not the end of the world if you don't get your initial... Uh, amount of uh, your initial debuffs off because you actually ramp your potency up over the course of the match but if you can start with a high degree of potency and then there's at least one character that gives you uh, I think a little bit more potency but here's the thing it's like it's hard to find places for all these things you want all the health you want all the speed and you want all the potency and so the the solution of course is to just find mods that have the speed and a high percent on potency. Potency is probably the, the least important out of all of them. There are going to be people who who uh, hate on me for, for saying that, but potency, yes, it's important. You really do want the, those, those uh, numbers. I, I think your health and your speed are going to be more important. Now, my, my General Grievous is too I mean, he's faster now. I think I upgraded one of the mods at some point recently. But if you get him to 270 speed, under BB-8, if you have all droids on the team, so gaining 40% turn meter, he's an effective 450 speed, which outspeeds the majority of teams. He does his AoE, puts that target lock on everyone, and then you gain a bunch of turn meter based off of your leadership. You probably want both Zetas, etc. Uh, but... I mean, this doesn't look like much. Each droid and each separatist ally gain 2% turn meter. So whenever a target locked enemy is damaged, you gain 2% turn meter. Doubled for Grievous, so he gains 4%. So if someone if someone does the AoE, an AoE on all of the different characters, um, then, yeah, like Grievous will gain 4% for each character. That's 20%. Uh, but then you also have B1 assisting, and you have Newt helping give a little bit more damage as well, which means he is gaining a bunch of turn meter. Also, like, um, Dark Side enemies lose, let's see, when damaged by an attack, you can also make them lose turn meter, and you can get rid of their potency, which is kind of one, an interesting thing. Grievous, very complex guy to mod. He wants, he wants all the things. I would recommend more damage and more speed, and then more potency, if you can do it. Starkiller is a guy who is kind of like, he, he's opposing himself. There's two different schools of thought, and I, I mean, it's tough to do it, guys. It's tough to do both. I think you could potentially do it. I mean, it, okay, so he, you either want health or you want offense. So offense, you just hit harder, obviously. Like, that's, that's, just how it works. <laughs> you have a lot of offense and you hit harder. The other one, and this is why it's so tricky to figure out, is, let's see, is this his, is this his ultimate? No, that's, that's his cool unique. So, so, um, Here's the thing, size means nothing. This is the Star Destroyer pull down. So, so if he's doing off, if you put him max off, max his offense, then uh, you're doing more damage turn to turn. As he takes turns, he does more damage. The, the other thing though is, if you wanted to maximize his ultimate, you can max his health instead, because it deals damage equal to 80% of Starkiller's max health to all enemies, and you can stun him. You also heal all the people, etc. 
And so your ult, his ultimate is actually you can you can do a lot more damage with his ultimate if you max out his health. But then if you max out his health, he's not going to have as much offense. And so uh, I that's just why people have been asking me a lot is what which one should I do? And I like the offense one because you're consistently doing offense or doing damage. And against the care and it also matters what characters you're trying to take out. Star Killer for me is someone who takes out the really tough teams. Unless I get lucky and I break through a back zone, I'm expecting Ray or something, and she's just not there. There's just some Ewoks. Then I, I'm like, well, Star Killer, you get to kill some Ewoks. <laughs> so here. I guess that that's that's the main thing though guys is I like offense build but then you can also put a bunch of health on him the other option and I don't love this but just something to keep in mind is you could always give him his ninth relic level like you should probably try to be getting him relic eight to be honest guys and that's where it stops where all the efficiency stops but he gets a lot of damage I mean if you go up to nine his physical damage barely increases really for how much it costs for the level of investment for for like for, for an enormous investment, you get another 200 damage on top of his already, you know, 10,000 or whatever it is. So, not really that worth it, but look at his health. It jumps up another 6k health, which, which after you have all the modding and everything, that's probably going to be another 12k health, which, I mean, that's that's not negligible. Like, if you, if you look at the, for, for reference, I mean, mine isn't a health build, Star Killer, but, you know, 86k health, I mean... Another 12k obviously would help quite a bit. And it's also doubled if you have his unique met, you know, have that satisfied. You also you want to give him some speed, but speed isn't gonna be your primary thing. For me, so you can get you can put the crit damage triangle on him if you want to. You could you could also just go straight offense, frankly. Uh, but I mean he's got a decent critical chance once you get him up to relic eight, and he's got a lot of damage. You now you can see with, with this level of damage, why do you need relic nine to give him another two hundred, three hundred, even after modding, still only gonna end up being four or five hundred. So uh, I guess the biggest question is you know, so you want you want offense mods, offense set, and then I think if you can find a fast offense arrow, and then an offset for for health is just going to be really helpful because you're gonna get your ult sometimes. The thing is, so he's killing those really hard teams. The ult doesn't kill really, really tough characters. Like it, it just doesn't kill like a Galactic Legend. There's been a lot of times I've used a Galactic Legend against him, and I'm like, oh no, he's got his ult. He pulls down the Star Destroyer, and my my <laughs> Galactic Legend is like, oh, I'm still in green health, like just fine, not not a big deal, and. It would still be the same even if they have really high health. I mean, that, that happens even if they are modded for health. So, offense first, in my opinion, and then health, you know, your mileage may vary. But that's that's kind of, kind of what you want. Like, if you're going to kill Galactic Legends, if you're just trying for an epic ultimate, I guess you can do the, the big one. But, I mean, it's not going to kill Rey. It's not going to kill Sith Eternal. And it's not going to kill Jedi Master Luke. And those are the ones he's kind of targeting. And so, I mean... The Star Destroyer pull is more for me. It's the I call it the Star Destroyer of Healing. It gets the whole team all the way full banner. So you use it at the end, hopefully finish everyone off and top them off on health and protection so that you can get your max banners. <laughs> One thing I will say, uh, don't do an undersized Star Killer team. Read his kit and find out why it's a little bit funny to think of. Now, Admiral Radis is one that everyone's going to be putting Relic 9 on at some point if you want the profundity, which I think you probably do. It seems wise. We don't have the kit yet, but it seems very good. I'm slowly putting 6E on him, so don't, uh, don't judge for no 6E on me, guys. So, there, there's a few different things that are going on here. So, if it's, we're talking about GAC in particular, while in GAC, Rogue One allies gain 40% max protection. That includes him, but that max protection is really nice. And then, I mean, otherwise, you know, so you gain Spark of Rebellion. When Spark of Rebellion's gone, you gain all these buffs. That's, that's pretty nice. Um, uh, but then, on top of that, so... So, you, um... 
you know, the, the, the thing is, you, you have your ultimate with him as well. You get your mini ult, and hit, so you get this hope thing, you do all the damage, or you, you, get, you get to it, revive all allies, all allies recover 100% health and protection, wonderful. Then deal, deal true damage to all enemies, and inflict healing immunity and protection disruption, blah blah blah. So, not only are you doing a bunch of damage, you're inflicting healing immunity, but the damage is pretty substantial, guys, it really is. And... It's all based on his offense. That's it. That that's the only thing it's based off of is him is his offense. It, and it's all it's it's just it doesn't really say if it's uh, based off his special or uh, whatever. It's just it's true damage though. It says deal deal true damage. So you want offense, guys. Offense and you don't want crit stuff. So you want you want a lot of protection because you're getting forty percent more protection and you're you're regenerating your protection quite a bit. Anyways, if you read his kit, but then you also want to max his offense, and so you find yourself modding him very very similarly to the way General Skywalker is modded with protection primaries, if you can, and then offense set because his ultimate isn't all is also just not going to kill everything right away it's like star killer it's like okay it's nice does some decent damage but it doesn't kill everyone and but you want him to survive you need him to survive as well because he's like it's the it's the thing that you have to do uh, it's the win condition the, so this is this is a health primary i mean we could get a we could get a protection one I liked the I like that there was a high protection percent there, and then there's also a percent of offense. This isn't the ideal mod, but I mean it's okay for him to have a little bit of health as well. It's a, like it's just not taking advantage of that huge protection boost that he gets in GAC if you have the Omicron. And obviously, I don't even have the six E square. Like th there's still issues with this with the way I'm modding him, but that's that's the route that I am going is protection. Uh, mostly, mostly protection primaries, but then you, know, you want offense as the secondary and the set as much as you can. So, Sorty's an interesting one, guys. Uh, there, there's a lot of different ways that you can mod her, and I feel like this is this is one that I, I'm the most sketchy on out of all of these. But the thing is, she actually does a pretty decent amount of damage, and she actually does well in PVE environments like Conquest. Even without the D Omicron, she just still does a lot of cool stuff. So you have to set her team up right, and at, at some point, I'll do some kind of a a faction essentials for her. I'm actually working on the Star Killer one. Hopefully that'll be out next week, like a week from now, hopefully Monday. Look to my coming on Monday at first light. But here's here's the thing, guys. So she really, really likes to go first if she can, so that she can get the Sabak shuffle out, so she can do the AoE, and then she gets target lock on people. She does all these things. Okay, so you guys can look at her kit, uh, but that's, that's that's the thing. She wants she wants to be pretty survivable. She wants to be able to apply those debuffs for for her. You know, she wants to be able to apply debuffs if she can. Target lock is a big deal for her, but she also wants to be able to do some damage. And so she's kind of contrasting with these, herself. The thing is, if you put BB8 with L or with T uh, with Sorty, then you you can you can go like. With the current Datacrons that are out, actually, you can get her to over a thousand effective starting speed, which is crazy. But, I mean, it's, it's kind of impractical as well. Like, over a thousand speed, yeah, that sounds fun, but you don't really need it. Uh, the, so, otherwise, you want health for her, though, guys, because she is gaining a huge amount of bonus protection as well. So, uh, let's see, is it under her leader? I forget which one she's actually gaining. So... Oh uh, yeah, so she gains defense, she gains speed, spare parts, blah 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 at the start of the battle, all allies are droids, she gains extra health and speed, so you want to maximize that health, I also want to maximize speed, <clears throat> spare parts is nice, uh, this is the VIP thing, uh, let's see, so, uh, so it recovers 5% health and protection whenever she's damaged, allies with VIP recover, all of this stuff, and then, uh, let's see, so... Uh, they gain offense up for two turns, and then she gains defense up and 50% protection up, stacking for max of 250 for two turns. And so, uh, what, like, this protection up is all based off of how much health she has. So she wants a little bit of damage, yes, but she also wants a huge amount of health because it's, she's going to be getting so much protection up, which makes her really resilient, and she she's just really tough to kill. Uh, so... 
giving her a little bit of speed. She gains plus 70 if she's the leader. Uh, if you if you read her kit, she gains plus 70. It's just on two different parts of her kit. And then, uh, yeah, so you want speed and you want health. And then, I mean, if you can do an, a little extra damage, that's great. Um, and then, you know, a little... I, I have the potency sets. I think probably it's more ideal to put health on her just to maximize that, that stat. But, uh, you know, you do you. Uh, I would like to give her some kind of a set with a bunch of, like, percent armor and resistance, honestly, so then see, and see if Wampa is able to actually take her out. I don't know, it seems fun. So, finally, we have Mother Talzin, and for a long time, people used to tell me you want speed on her, and uh, what I've found is the more offense she has, the more crazy damage she can do. So I just recently got her Datacron, which, you know, she can do some cool stuff. She's going to do more damage, but there's a few different abilities that she can use here that, that are really helpful. Um, And in, in reality, so she does special damage. Uh, you know, all of her stuff is special damage. Special damage on all of her stuff. And... Her special crit chance is actually really low. Like, I, I've put a lot of effort into it. Um, and, you know, I have 50% extra crit chance on her. Which brings her up to, like, kind of close to 80%. And that this is an enormous amount of work on, on that crit chance. The crits are really nice. I mean, it's, it's worth trying to crit with her. But in reality, you really just want to max this damage because special damage, you can see the 1200 or 12,000 number versus her physical offense. The, that's just the way it is. Like special damage dealers end up doing more damage, uh, but then they don't crit as often. That's kind of the intent and design behind a lot of these characters. And so, I mean, even if you increase her her relic level, she doesn't actually gain any crit chance here at all. She gains physical crit chance, but we don't care about that. We care about her crit chance for her, for her special, and so, uh, yeah, she, she really wants to be able to do a lot of damage. Uh, and the thing is, her AoE, now with the Datacron especially, it's really nice because she can just spam this if she wants. This actually does, this, it ignores protection. And so there's been times that, uh, I mean, like I've been running it in an arena and I've dropped to like the 200, so kind of garbage teams up there anyways, but there are times that you can just one-shot characters with this just because she's no, she's ignoring protection entirely. She just does her AoE and then she can spam that in with the Datacron, like I said, not, not that you're not that you should build her with just the Datacron in mind, but uh, the other thing is, guys, so she wants a little bit of, sp like, speed sounds nice on her, that, that's for sure. She also dies really easily, um, but she, she just wants offense. She wants offense, crit chance, and then the, the big thing, the awesome thing about her, uh, well, there's a few things, but this unique, it, if you put the Zeta on, when any unit falls below half health, Talzin gains 35% turn meter. If you have her AoE to, picked up to the max as much as she can, then she's going to be giving herself a bunch of turn meter just based off of plague break, plague bearer. Even if it doesn't kill the characters and they revive their health really quickly afterward, she's still gaining all of that extra turn meter. So she she doesn't necessarily like on a team that's designed to be squishy and have their characters like killed a lot she really is one of the fastest characters out there even if you don't put hardly any speed on her you just want as much offense as you can i used to want to put potency on her as well if you want to work on your potency that's fine she does give herself another 30 percent potency after all of that but uh you know because of her lead and then I guess Asajj gives her another 30% with her Omicron in GAC. So you, you could do some, you know, she's going to be sticking her, her debuff quite a bit. Uh, but really, I think that offense, just maximizing that, is really going to get you where you're going. So I think that's about it for today, folks. Let me know what your thoughts are. How do you mod these characters differently? Thank you all so much for watching. And remember that in all things, Xerath prevails.